Welcome to another episode of UEN's PDTV. I'm your host, Katie Blunt. There are a lot of educational technology tools for educators to choose from, but it's important that we not just use technology for technology's sake, but instead carefully research the tools to make the right decisions for our students and our classrooms. Two of our EdTech competencies focus on these very skills. EdTech Competency 1B focuses on essential pedagogical understanding and application. It states that educators should explore and apply instructional design principles and core standards for high quality digital instruction using research-based models of technology integration to engage and support learning aligned with LEA goals. EdTech competency number two focuses on professional growth and leadership. It states that educators should collaborate with colleagues to identify, adopt, and evaluate digital tools and resources for learning. In this episode, we will see how these two competencies work hand in hand as we visit Helen M. Knight Elementary in Moab, where second grade teacher Abby Martinez uses Nearpod, an online student engagement platform, to instruct her students. Abby, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me. Well, I'm really excited to hear how you're using Nearpod, but first, I need a little background information. How did you first learn about Nearpod as a digital tool you could use in your classroom? So my instructional coach introduced it to me because I was using Google Slides to kind of teach different content areas because I like that for pacing but I was struggling more with engagement. And so my instructional coach brought up Nearpod as a tool to help keep the kids engaged, it helps with pacing. Like it has different tools so that the class can participate in activities throughout. So it seems like based on what the tool does, you were really able to decide, yeah, this is the tool that's going to be best for my classroom. Yeah, because it was a way of I could just kind of incorporate something new and not have to start over. It just was, I can use, I use the Nearpod add-on feature to Google Slides, so then I could just add that to what I was already doing and didn't have to recreate a bunch of new lessons. Oh, that is really nice to find a tool that fits so well into, like you said, what you're doing and what you want to accomplish. Yeah. Oh, that is great. So tell me a little bit more about how you use Nearpod in your classroom. So. I use, like I said, Google Slides, and I create the Google Slides first and then add in the activities through Nearpod. So then I use, I use it more for language arts areas like spelling and vocab. And so then we, as a class, go through all the spelling activities. And then after each section, I include an activity for a formative assessment. So we'll do a spelling lesson and then like, uh, there's the picture matching that we do for the spelling words and then vocab will use time to climb to measure if they know their vocab words and then I'll throw in like an open-ended question where they can type a sentence or they either ask them a question or I say use this vocab word in a sentence and then they have to type their answer and then it gets posted on the board so that everyone can see different answers and we can talk about and I can hide their names so that I can talk about, oh, what did this person do? What did this person need in their sentence to make it a little better? So showing those student examples on the fly yeah. so that kids can see what's going well or what needs improvement, and so can yeah. you. Yeah, and it also gets, because I've in the past I would waste a lot of time on transition, just getting out a paper, getting out a pencil, and now I can just move through a slide and say type your answer here and it's only like five minutes and then we can move on. Yeah. So. So a lot more efficiency too mm -hmm. and engagement. Yes. And I think I saw another activity you did today with some drag and drop. Tell me about that one. Yes. So the drag and drop was a word sort. So based on our spelling rule this week it was different ways to make the ah sound like A-U-A-W, O-U-G-H, and so they can make, they have a list of words in their word bank that they can drag the words to the correct spelling pattern. 
So like you said, very engaging activities mm -hmm. that just flow right along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you said you can show them the screen um, up in front of the whole class, but that's not the only way students can access the material with Nearpod, right? Yeah. What else is great about Nearpod in that way? So I can also show it on the board, but I can click share. So then it shares to all their computers and they can see it right in front of them instead of having to like constantly look up and back and forth between like a paper and the board and they can just look at the screen right in front of them. That is so, great. Yeah, so that makes it handy. So we love all of these tools and all the different activities that you can do in Nearpod, but we also know that it's not meaningful unless it really fits into the goals and standards you're working on, mm -hmm. right? So tell me about how you plan your Nearpod lessons to ensure that they do meet the standards. So when I'm planning, I make sure I have the objectives in the slides so then I can go over it with them. I tell them and make them repeat after me what we're learning today, why we're learning it, how they know they're going to learn it. And then I make sure I cover, like today in spelling, we were practicing the ah sound. So we were talking about the words that have the ah sound and why they were learning it. They know they learned it when they can spell it on their spelling test. And we just did activities that kind of went with that sound. With vocab, same thing. We covered our weekly vocabulary words, talked about why we're learning them, and then we did an activity to make sure they know them and just to continue practice before the end of the week when we have to do take our tests. Yeah, I love that because clearly to you and to the students, you are starting with those objectives. It's that backward design model that works mm -hmm. so well with education and, and then you come full circle with that assessment at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's made, it, made it makes it easy. It makes it more engaging. They have they have more fun with it too when they can actually do the activities. Like they love time to climb. As you probably saw, they got so excited. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I loved seeing the kids' reactions during the time to climb. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we know that having data-driven instruction is very mm -hmm. important as well. And you mentioned the ability to have on-the-fly summative assessments. What do you do after the fact with all of that information? How does Nearpod help you? So afterwards, I can go back in, there's a report section, and I can go back in and it shows everything we did. It shows I can pull back up all their sentences that they typed, the collaboration board, I can see their, the wall of like the sticky notes where they typed. On um, Time to Climb, it shows, it shows just their score, like if I, today we did eight problems, so it shows me if they got like eight out of eight or four out of eight, and I can use that to help with grading or just to kind of see if, where I need to teach something better or hit next. And it also, I like how that I can hit things that I have a hard time getting to. For example, grammar, I have a hard time getting to that throughout the day, but I can hit little things through my challenge word section. Like today we talked about proper nouns and root words and so. So I can kind of go back and do little lessons throughout our spelling practice. Yeah, I love that, I love that. Again, much more efficient and it also helps you remember, oh, I'm going to mention this here and <laughs> yeah. this here. <laughs> it definitely helps my organization skills because that's my goal is to keep organized. And uh, so it helps me with that. Oh, mm -hmm. That is great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to come to your classroom and see how you're using Nearpod in your classroom. Yeah, thank you for giving our class an opportunity to do this. It was such a cool experience. Now that you have seen competencies 1B and 2 in action, let's explore how you can implement them in your own teaching. Identifying, adopting, and evaluating digital tools is an important part of professional growth and leadership. There are many resources that can help you with this process. The Learn platform helps you make evidence-based decisions about digital teaching and learning tools. In fact, when Utah started the Digital Teaching and Learning Grant Program, educators all around the state used the Learn platform to help them determine which digital tools would be best for their DTL plans. 
Common Sense Media is another digital platform that provides ratings and reviews for digital tools and apps. Educators can also use a variety of rubrics to help them evaluate the digital tools they're considering using in their classrooms. And of course, reach out to your school or district education technology coach for help in determining which digital tools will be best for you and your students. Now, tools do not replace good teaching. So, essential pedagogical understanding and application is vitally important. Start with your core standards. You can access the core standards on the USBE website or at uen.org. Unpack your standards and really identify the focal concepts and skills and the expected level of knowledge, application, and performance for each of your core standards. Next, make sure that all you are doing is aligned with your local education agency goals. Ensure that you are using quality instructional design principles as well. Utah's high quality instructional cycle can help you ensure that the lessons you are planning are complete and effective. Backward design is also used by a lot of educators. It can help you set your learning intentions and success criteria to ensure that the engaging activities that you are planning reach your goals. Utah's PCBL framework can also help. It can help you plan personalized and competency-based learning activities. Be sure to also differentiate your instruction to reach the variety of learners in your classroom. Data-driven instruction is also very important. Data can help you determine whether your instruction is actually accomplishing the goals that you have set. Once you have established your standards, your LEA goals, and what good teaching really is, it's time to bring the technology into your lessons. You can use research-based models of technology integration to help you use technology effectively. For example, the TPAC framework helps you understand how technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge work together. The SAMR model helps you evaluate how you are using technology in your classroom. Are you using it for substitution, augmentation, modification, or redefinition of traditional teaching styles? The PICRAP model can help you evaluate how students are engaging with the technology. Are they passive, interactive, or creative? It can also help you understand how the use of technology affects traditional practice. Does it replace it, amplify it, or transform it? And the Triple E framework can help you understand how technology tools help students engage in, enhance, and extend learning goals. For even more resources, tools, and strategies, be sure to visit uen.org slash pdtv and explore the teacher toolkit that accompanies this episode. Thanks for watching this episode of UEN's PDTV. To access more professional development resources and to schedule a training, visit uen.org slash development. We'll see you next time.